Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I know it might not be real obvious, but I work out a lot. So I'm driving home from Amanda Barnett's baby shower the other night and I'm pulling up over the hill down into Greenbrier and this good looking young man in the truck next to me is motioning at me and I'm like, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. I get to the stoplight, laboriously crank down my window and I look at him expectantly thinking, did I leave something on the roof of my car or is my gas cap open? When are you gonna call me, he said. Are, what, are you mad, man? Hey, what's up? I'm Amy with Greater Than Rubies and today I wanna to talk about something kinda of cool. It's pickup lines from a biblical perspective. So you can tell a lot about guys by the pickup lines they use, right? So there's guys who are funny enough that they can deliver those really ridiculous lines and still make you laugh. And then there's guys who totally come across desperate and just gross. Some guys make everything into a pickup line. It's like, hey, do you like broccoli? The worst guys though are the ones who don't even put effort into anything. It's like super non-creative and it's supposed to be complimentary, but it's not. It's like, hey girl, couldn't help but notice you're hot. Stay tuned for side rant. I don't know if you noticed, but hot is not really a compliment. Hot is like what you describe the chicken nuggets as when they were too long in the microwave. I am not a nugget. Hot is just gross. It's basically what people say when they're like, I want something sexual and that's all they can come up with. I am a human being. I am a human being. So unless it's like 106 degrees outside and I'm sweating profusely, you have no reason to say that I look hot. So this really does have a point. I wanna show you the absolute best pickup line I have ever seen in my life. And it's from the Bible. It's in Genesis 29 and verses 10 through 12. Um, but I'm just gonna read 11 and 12 and then verse 18 as well. So. Verse 11 says, Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told her father. Okay, if you're not familiar with the story, Jacob has left his home because of some shady dealings with his brother and his parents told him to come find a wife. So he's gone all this way and he's been praying and hoping and looking for this woman and lo and behold, it is her and she's lovely and he's overcome with emotion because God has provided like the wife of his dreams. And so he has authenticity. He embraces her, gives her a kiss and tells her that he is a relative. I know it's weird, they're cousins. Let's get over that for now. There's not that many people on the earth. But I want you to notice what is not happening here. There is no pickup line. There is no like, Hey, baby, want to procreate? None of that. It's just authenticity. Here's the pickup line. Pay attention to this. Let's look at verse 18. It says, Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. So Jacob here is telling Laban, Hey, I want to pick up your daughter, but like, I want to work for her and with her because she is shepherding the flocks for seven years and then I'm gonna marry her. If that's not a pickup line, I don't know it is. That old adage is true. Actions definitely speak louder than words. Girls, if you're tired of hearing all these stupid words from guys and trying to figure out what kind of guy they are and what kind of lines they're throwing out, just remember this story because a guy who is really worth your time and your interest is not the kind of guy who's throwing out lines. I mean, sure, they're funny, but for serious, he's the kind of guy that is going to want to work for you and with you, probably not seven years, but for you and with you. And during the time that you spend together, you'll be able to see his godly character in action. You'll be able to know and like and trust him. A true man of God is not going to have lines. He's going to have 
actions and they're always going to be toward God. Hey, if you found this bit of information helpful or entertaining or a combination, I would love to have you as a subscriber. When you subscribe to my videos, it actually helps the search engine see that you like it and ranks me higher in the results for when people look up things. And that way we can get them more godly biblical wisdom. Cool? Also would love to have you share with a friend or leave any comments below. If you have questions about the Bible or would like some random piece of advice, I would love to do a video just for you. You can email me at amy, A-M-I-E, at greaterthanrubies.org. Thanks and see you soon. I also study the Word like a lot and so um, I kind of put the stud in Bible study. Mm. Oh, what's that? You, you like songs? Oh, Song of Solomon. Oh, that's, that's racy, girl. That's real racy. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Solomon, I know why he had 700 wives. Yeah, because he hadn't met you. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but um, I can chop down the tree in like 47 seconds. Let's just say I know how to swing an axe. Um, there is just one thing that I wanted to say, and this is purely platonic in nature. You may take it as you will, but I do wish to say that your hair is like a flock of goats descending from Gilead. That is all. That is all I wanted to say. Also, I love you. I love you.